What's up guys, Inigami here, and let's go through Treasure Map Kaido on the Japanese version of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Kaido, of course, is the ambush. That's right, Treasure Map Kaido's got ambush back again. So the ambush is going to be versus Kaido himself. Final stage is going to be Jack. Well, just a reminder, all these teams that I'm using, if you're playing this on the global version or if you're watching this video for the global version, they're going to have different boosted characters, so you're going to make some very different teams. And a lot of my teams will have a lot of rare recruit characters that you'll need to swap out. And I'm still on the early runs. This is run four for me. So it's still really, really easy and it's just not very threatening. So I'm using a lot of teams that have characters just for their proficiency and limit breaks that I don't really need and will be replaced later on for better teams. But at least this will give you an idea of what the characters do and some example teams that you can use. Uh, I'm also using the three year anniversary ship for this guide. Just gives us extra EXP. You can use any other ship at all. Of course, Vanderdecken ship, the standard go-to. So Kaido Ambush shows up. Stage one immediately just dies. That's the support animation. If you've never seen it before, it looks great. Stage one shows up, reduces all your cooldowns by 15 turns, and just runs away. So not only if you're using Treasure Out Boosted characters do you get that cooldown reduction, but also 15 turns cooldown reduction on stage one throws you right into stage two. Basically, Anything that's not like a Monday or a Whitebeard is gonna be ready to go. Stage 2, Kaido has 590,000 hit points. He's going to lock our chain to 1.3 times for 8 turns. We're gonna use uh, one of our Luffy specials because on death, there's, there's actually nothing we really have to do here. We don't have to use Luffy at all. Uh, we can just kill him. Uh, you could use Frumpy here. So that way we can get three perfects and you'll have Frumpy's three turn boost on this stage. Doesn't really matter, just get through there. I will use Frumpy here now. Kaido, stay on the final stage, stage three. Starts at 1.2 million hit points. He always starts at 590,000 hit points once again. So as you go through treasure map, that health bar is going to get longer and longer. And he's, but he's always going to have 590,000 hit points. He's also going to prevent all debuffs. Starts attacking every two turns for 6,200. Below 20%, if you leave him alive, he'll blow away four random characters. And every turn, if you use damage reducing uh, abilities, he will clear that buff. So turn one, I'm just going to use Frumpy. Not going to use the uh, Luffy to get better attacks. So I do want to hit three perfects so I can get Frumpy boost. Or if you use Frumpy on a previous stage, you'll have the three turn attack boost from her as well just if you're using my team. When he revives, he's going to put damage to the gate for one turn up. If you have Raid Boss Blackbeard, who is boosted on this treasure map, you can use him right here to get rid of that and kill him on the second turn. Whenever he revives, he, re he will revive to full health. So now is when you want to use your big boosting specials. Uh, Inazuma, also nice because it gives us that damage threshold for one turn. So I'm just going to tank a hit. And it's after the attack. Every turn he clears buff, he clears uh, damage thresholds and damage negations. So most will turn damage threshold and stuff will not work, but it at least lets you buy that one turn. Now I'll use my Luffy, get that orb boost once again. Now I have orb boost and type boost, and that's all I need to kill Kaido, at least for now. Later on, I can throw things in, like I can throw um, an affinity booster in here. Can't use conditional attack boost, of course, because he has. Uh, debuff protection, but you can use an Affinity Booster here if you need it as his health gets higher and higher. But not bad. Pretty, pretty easy. In general, all of the mini bosses for, or in general, this treasure map is just pretty easy. There's nothing too dangerous here. It's it's kind of, kind of okay. And as far as everyone else that I use in that team, I, did, I don't need Inazuma special yet. Everyone else on this team I'm just kind of using because I want their loot break points in there. Since the ambush fight does give you a lot of proficiency points on a character. A treasure map ambush gives you I think 50,000 proficiency points. So always just trying to want to aim for that. I'll see you on the next boss fight. Versus X Drake. X Drake has starts out at 500,000 hit points. My team for him is double Hancock shooters. And the reason I want to use Double Hancock Shooter is because X-Drake does have a interrupt where if you use a type booster, then he is going to clear all your buffs. Well, 
Just don't use a tight booster. Uh, you can use Strusen or anyone who is uh, a later turn attack boost. Nice thing about Strusen also is that Strusen, since she doesn't give you a tight boost the first turn that you use her, you actually can use her on the final stage. So you get into X Drake, forget to use Strusen on an earlier stage, use Strusen. Uh, uh, Frumpy, wow, holy, holy butts, holy butts, Frumpy. Why am I calling her Strusen? You can use Frumpy, that's her name. You can use Frumpy on the final stage because her turn one of her special doesn't give you an attack boost. So, Frumpy's turn one just lets you get an attack boost on the later turns. So you can use Frumpy's special, hit three perfects, get the attack boost from her, and then actually burst down x straight. All right, so here, stage six, I'm gonna use Frumpy. I'll make sure we hit those three perfects. Boom, da boom, da boom. One, two, three. After three perfects, that means we'll actually have Frumpy's attack boost on. X Drake, 550,000 EX uh, health at the start. Delay prevention for 29 turns. He's gonna give you all empty orbs. We're gonna use Hancock three times. Uh, Hancock once gives you an int orb, twice gives you a recovery orb, and also gives you that conditional attack boost. Three times changes back into an int orb and also gives you that orb boost. Totally unnecessary right now, since he dies. But eventually, that does it. Mashing orb, tight boost, orb boost, conditional attack boost. Versus Sheep's Head. Sheep's Head is actually red. He's gonna turn himself into strength on the final stage. Very, very easy. Nothing really dangerous about him. He does lower your chain by uh, to basically nothing. So you're gonna have like basically no chain when you get to him for nine turns. So you could use a chain locker or a chain reduction remover. But he doesn't have any sort of special interrupts. You can use whatever team you want. We're gonna use Cavendish. He's big boosted on his team. You can just use a friend Cavendish. And that's all you need. I do also have Luffy on this team who will shuffle our orbs around. So it's kind of random if you get both Luffy's affinity boost and Cavendish's uh, type and orb boost on the right ones. You could use treasure map Zoro. No, raid boss Zoro who is also boosted on here, so that way you can actually get that affinity boost without shuffling your orbs around. Inuashi, just nice. Everyone else in this team, just nice. A friend Cavendish and any team that works will easily carry you through this island for a lot, a lot of turns. Like I said, he doesn't have any sort of special interrupts. Uh, he does prevent debuffs, so you don't get to use a conditional attack booster, but you do get to use your affinity boosters, and there are two free to play quick affinity boosters boosted on this time on Japan, that being Luffy and Zoro. Boss fight Sheep's Head. He only starts out at 480,000 hit points, changes to red, lowers your chain, prevents debuffs to himself. Uh, he actually will probably die to just my specials, so I don't think I even get to attack him yet. But you can use your friend Cavendish, you can use your Luffy to see if... Yeah, so now my Cavendish loses loses a matching orb. But he does die already, so, so I don't even get a chance to use other stuff. Eventually you get to attack him, and eventually, you know, fight him. So versus Dofi. Dofi is going to bind your bottom row by 10 turns. So you want to use a team that can either remove bind or a team that you don't really need all six characters for. We're gonna use a friend Carrot, a Carrot Law team, or a Carrot Ace team for now. I am also using Treasure Map Zoro Sanji, who I'm going to leave on Sanji so we make sure we get red, yellow, and blue characters for our Ace Captain ability. Uh, you could also do Carrot Law instead of Carrot Ace. I, did I, I think I said Law. Man, I've messed up names so many times today. On this team, only my Carrot, Inazuma, and Law are fully boosted by Carrot. Ace, Strusen, correct name this time, and Sanji are only single boosted, although if I use Sanji's special and transform him, he will get double boost as well, but we don't need them all. 
Struzen, nice as a five turn bind remover. So between Struzen and Law, we are going to put them in the middle row. So that way when we use both of their specials, they'll reduce our bind and we can actually uh, use our bottom two characters. But once again, during the early runs, their health are so low, it doesn't matter much. Carrot for the orb boost, Ace for matching orbs and type boost, putting Law on the left column so that way uh, Law will give us two more matching orbs after Ace gives us red orbs. So we'll have matching orbs on all of my characters except for my Sanji who we're not gonna change because Law already gives us the uh, chain lock. Although if I wanted to, I could use Sanji so we can get double type. Don't have to worry about his uh, Struzen's cooldown not being ready because Carrot will reduce that cooldown. Makes him ready. Five turns, bind removal. Use my Ace before my Law. So that way we can get the matching orbs over there. And just attacking with Law should kill him for now. So that's pretty easy. Not, not even needing to attack with any of my other characters yet. It's going to work for a long, long, long time. Versus Caesar. Caesar is going to be in. Caesar's going to have three guys with perfect hit barriers. So uh, Treasure Map, Whitebeard, going to be very, very good for this fight. Treasure Map, Whitebeard, once again, amazing for anybody who has any sort of barriers and low health to kill a bunch of fodder units. And since we like Whitebeard, Nekomamashi works great. Nekomamashi 6 plus also is an added bonus. We'll help get rid of Bind because there is going to be someone who binds for... Uh, five turns on stage six, which essentially just becomes one turn of bind on the final stage on two random non-captain characters. Not dangerous or threatening, you could always pass the turn since Caesar doesn't do anything on his turn one, but it does help to just have that one turn of bind removal or the three turns of bind removal I think that uh, Nekomamashis do. And once again, the difficulty is pretty low. Remember that fodder units don't really scale in health that much, so your white beard will be killing the fodder units around Caesar for a very, very, very long time. Unlike the boss who actually scales up pretty well, fodder units don't really scale really well, so white beard should be able to just kill everyone for the longest and longest of times. So Nekomamashi captains always great, gives us plenty of health. This dragon right here, he's the one. So we're going to kill him. On death, he's going to bind two random non-captain characters. There you go. This tomorrow, we don't really care about that. But if he did bind our Whitebeard, we want to use our Nekomamashi earlier. It really just goes down to one turn of bind. Caesar. About 450,000 hit points. His fodder units only have like 25,000 hit points. So Whitebeard kills those pretty easily. Uh, if you want to use your type booster from Aokiji, if you're using Aokiji like I am, make sure you use that before Whitebeard so you get the proper attack boost instead of Whitebeard just boosting himself. He also makes perfects easier to hit and gives you burn debuff, but the burn debuff only hits for 2,000. And remember that if you kill the stage, burn doesn't actually trigger. So it doesn't matter if you have one health and you get burnt every single time. You hit six perfect with one health. If you kill the stage on the same time as a, a burn debuff, burn doesn't trigger. So the burn debuff actually incredibly inconsequential. You don't have to worry about using a burn remover at all for this fight. Final stage, Jack. So Jack is going to be strength. Using a carrot team actually works out really well for Jack since Jack is going to have barriers a few times. Uh, he is also going to make orbs count as badly matching and give you all tandem and recovery orbs and also have a special interrupt on orb manipulation. So you either want to bring someone who gives you any sort of beneficial orbs so that way you don't get that badly matching orbs. Even a one turn beneficial orb matcher will work. I'm using Luffy for my beneficial orb matcher. As long as you have one turn of beneficial orb matching, that's what you're going to need. Monk Door, who is boosted, is really nice here to get rid of the percent damage reduction. You can use any percent damage reducer. Uh, Zoro, great on this team since Zoro is also quick. Also gives you affinity boost. Monk Door's affinity boost uh, doesn't really matter since he doesn't give affinity boost to quick characters. Uh, so whenever we use him, he's really not going to do much. So I will want to get Monk Door ready. 
uh, in a few turns. Tr uh, Cracker here, that's rare group Cracker. Cracker here is actually very, very good. Since Cracker's Sailor ability will make tandem orbs count as matching for my red, green, and blue characters. So he gets matching orbs on tandem, which will basically mean half my team will get matching orbs on the final stage. Since whenever Jack dies, he's going to give you all either recovery or tandem orbs. So here, ready to go. If you do not have a uh, someone to get rid of badly matching orbs, or someone who is an orb beneficial orb matcher, you don't want to use Nami here since Nami will make badly matching orbs into matching orbs, and that would trigger Jack's or uh, special interrupt on the final stage. So this Jack starts off at 400. 480,000 hit points, reduces damage taken by 80% for 3 turns, and 3 turns of debuff protection. We're going to use Monk Door, get rid of that. You also have uh, Colosseum Magellan, but Colosseum Magellan doesn't get rid of 3 turns. He only attacks for 3,500, and on turn 1 he'll start increasing his damage. Turn 1 he boosts his attack by 1.5 times for 4 turns. I will use a Luffy here to get that affinity uh, or matching boost. And if we have attack up and Luffy kills it, that's totally fine. You only need one turn of orb matching since Jack will do it on death. So on death, he will give you all recovery and tandem orbs. He's gonna make recovery and tandem orbs count as badly matching for three turns and lock your orbs for three turns. Or four, no, three turns, yeah. And then he dies. Final stage, Jack. Starts off at 1.2 million hit points, lowers your attack for 3 turns, that's what our Nami is for. If you don't have someone to make it so that way you don't have badly matched orbs, you can use Colosseum Neptune, who will not shuffle your orbs around. If you orb shuffle, he will give you, he'll clear your buffs, give badly matching again, so uh, don't orb shuffle. Uh, now we'll use our Luffy, we'll use our... Magellan, since he doesn't have any sort of debuff protection, Magellan gives us that conditional attack boost. And also the strongly poison, but that doesn't matter too much. And we'll use Cracker for a tight boost. We have tight boost or boost. And off he goes. Last me for quite some time. That's all the fights, guys. Treasure map Kaido. Fights pretty easy. Once again, a double carrot team works really well in the final stage. Double Katakuri works great. Of course, you don't have to worry about um, badly matching or anything like that with Katakuri. And attack down doesn't really matter to Katakuri since most of his damage will come from his special. Although you will have to stall with Katakuri, which is a bit annoying. Uh, treasure map Kaido is... He's okay. He's not actually... Super, super awesome, especially for as as how good Kaido is in in universe, as how, how strong Kaido is in universe. His actual character is just kind of okay. So let's look at Kaido. Kaido Captain uh, is a strength-driven powerhouse character. Oops. His captain ability will boost his own attack by 3.25 times. Boost the attack of other driven characters and other powerhouse characters by 2.75 times and boost everyone's health by, or boost driven powerhouse characters by 1.2 times health. So he's really just a, a 2.75 times powerhouse slash driven captain. Decent captain ability. Actually, pretty good captain ability. 3.25 times self driven powerhouse captain. Good stuff. His special ability clears all positive buffs. It always clears all positive buffs. So that's good. Um, that's always kind of useful, clearing all positive buffs. Now here's where it gets funky. Depending on how many recovery orbs you've eaten, he's going to give you a... Uh, he also will always cut health by 20% that pierces through barriers. So perfect hit barriers, whatever, cuts health by 20%. Now here's where it gets funky. Depending on how many recovery orbs you eat, he will give you a 1.5 times orb boost to all characters and a 3.25 times type boost to himself for 0 to 6 turns. So you've eaten 0 recovery orbs by the time you use a special, he'll give you no type or orb boost at all. 
So you could use him to get rid of, if you don't eat any recovery orbs, you could use his special, get rid of your positive buffs, and then use some other buffs. So like you could use him and then use a ty another type booster and another orb booster if you get more damage out of that. If you eat one recovery orb, he gives you one turn of 1.5 times orb boost to all characters and 3.25 times to himself. If you've eaten six recovery orbs, it's a six turn 1.5 times orb boost and 3.25 times type boost. Six turns of 1.5 times orb boost is not really good. Like, if you have six turns of that, you are going to probably lower your damage than using an actual real team, or actually, actually real specials. So, if you can get him as a one to two turn, or eat one or two recovery wars, make him one to two turn, use him for a mini boss, uh, also, he is a driven character, so he does work well on Dofi teams. So that way, your final hit, being just himself, does a lot of damage compared to all the other characters. That's always nice to get a lot of damage for a Legend Do V2 Dofi special. But if you eat a lot of recovery orbs, that six turns of type and orb boost can actually be a little bad since it's going to lower your damage than using like a two times orb booster and a two times type booster, which is going to be way better. So, a mixed bag with Kaido's special. Either you want to eat no recovery orbs, or just a few. And yes, also very important to note, thank you chat, he does not give himself a matching orb. So unlike Cavendish, who gives himself a matching orb, or Treasure Map Cavendish, who helps make badly matching into matching, there's no orb manipulation at all on Kaido's. So if you have no matching orbs, Kaido's 1.5 times orb boost isn't going to help at all. His limit break abilities are orb uh, slot bind reduction that goes up to five turns on himself and crit hit which goes up to a 80% chance of critting for 10% extra damage. Sailor abilities boost attack of powerhouse and driven by 50 and he cannot be blown away. Oh yeah, he also has a support ability. He does have a support ability which... I actually don't know what it is. It looks like 8% stats. I don't know who he boosts, though. I've been Zinigami, guys. That's Treasure Map Kaido. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all stay beautiful.